Uh, for those of you that um, I haven't met, my name is Sean DeBrun. I'm the CEO of the Tourism Industry Council. Um, oh, so do I need to do anything with that still? Or? It's great to uh, see lots of people in person. Um, and I think we've got quite a few people online and we're also recording the session. Um, what is obviously a difficult period for our industry with the latest government restrictions that have been implemented over the last 48 hours. Um, but we're here to talk about tourism awards. So uh, um, I, I wanted to, first of all, thank all of you for nominating. Um, the tourism awards is a wonderful program, something that I'm very passionate about. And I know many others are. Um, ultimately, it's a wonderful program to, for a business development purpose. Um, in my opinion, and I, I believe it's correct, um, ultimately everyone that enters the Tourism Awards is a winner. I know everyone wants to be a winner, but everyone that enters is a winner because it delivers strong business development outcomes. And that's one of the reasons why at TickSA we put a lot of time and energy into this program and it's been running for over 30 years. And as you, for those of you that haven't entered before, and there's a lot of people that haven't this year, um, but those of you that have entered before, I'm sure you would agree that the process to put in a submission for tourism awards is a significant process. And ultimately that's where the business development opportunity is. Um, that uh, this year and Stella will go through the details. Um, you've got to document, you know, many thousands of words. Um, industry that I talk to and say, you know, why do you enter the tourism awards? A lot of people come back to me and say things like, it's my business health check. It's the way in which I get my business peer reviewed. Um, by experts that go across it. It's my business development opportunity. It's the discipline I need to make sure that I'm documenting my business in what is a uh, fast moving environment, obviously a resource intense environment. So um, congratulations to all of you for taking the time and effort to nominate. We're incredibly passionate about the Tourism Awards and we've got a program of support to make sure that particularly new entrants um, but also those that are re-entering receive the support that they need to be able to go through the program in a way in which that it benefits your business. And hopefully you receive recognition on the night. Um, so, and Stella is your go-to person. She will be speaking later on. I'm sure most of you know her, but if you're, if you're struggling with the work that's involved, if you're struggling with some of the questions, we have a number of support elements that we provide entrance from one-on-one -on -one support through to, um, and Stella will talk, I'm sure, more about this in detail, but there's four or five elements that we can provide in terms of supporting you to go through that process, to document your business and to produce a very strong submission that ultimately uh, will be judged through our judging process. So without any more from me, um, thank you again for um, supporting the program. Really look forward to um, the program running between now and obviously the uh, dinner event in November. And thank you to our LGA partners for having us here today and for their support, not only of this program, but our industry. And so on that, I'd now like to introduce um, Dr. Thomas Corns to uh, come and address the group. Thanks, Tom, for having us. Yeah, look, thank you, uh, Sean, and um, uh, we're more than uh, uh, more than pleased to support the work of TickSA today through this workshop. Um, a warm welcome to all of you who are here um, at Government House today. Apologies for the lengthy COVID uh, sign-in process, but I hope that some of the refreshments that have been provided with the assistance of TickSA um, have in some way compensated for that. Um, look, I won't take up too much of your time this morning but I just want to provide you with a bit of an overview of how councils um, support the South Australian tourism industry and, and may be able to support uh, your business. Um, but before that, a bit, a bit more housekeeping. Um, as you would have uh, come in, many of you have already um, helped yourself to the uh, tea and coffee facilities. Um, feel free to duck out at any time and, um, and use those facilities at your convenience during the morning. Um, they'll also be available uh, during a morning tea break as well. Um, in case of emergency, um, uh, which will be signalled uh, through the, a fire alarm, 
um, you must vacate this building safely uh, via the main entrance that you uh, came in uh, through. Uh, and you should do this independently and not wait to be directed by a staff or a warden. Um, the bathroom facilities. And again, I understand that we've got a bit of a fortress here at local government house uh, and those bathrooms are um, secured uh, behind a, a, a door that requires either a pass or a code. So if one, if a staff member is not available to uh, assist you to access the bathroom, the code on that door is 2580. So that will allow you to get access uh, to the bathroom facilities. Uh, look, with regards to the role councils perform uh, in supporting the tourism uh, industry, I'm, I would like to think that many of you had already uh, had the support of council staff, uh, potentially in the, um, uh, in the establishment of your business operations at some stage. Um, many uh, councils prioritise support to the tourism industry by uh, assisting you to understand uh, regulatory requirements, uh, your compliance responsibilities, uh, necessary permits that you may need, uh, and they uh, also help many businesses with grant funding uh, opportunities. And I note that uh, many councils, particularly regional councils, have uh, helped with letters of support uh, to many uh, private sector businesses in their grant applications to the SATC's uh, $20 million Tourism Industry Development Fund. Um, of course, many councils offer visitor information services as well, um, both through bricks and mortar facilities and online um, promotion, uh, which is very valuable um, to the tourism uh, industry. Um, but there's some of the direct supports. There's also many indirect supports that councils provide through the provision of uh, infrastructure and through uh, local uh, government advocacy as well. So. Uh, and I understand that through the COVID-19 pandemic, probably the tourism industry, the hospitality and accommodation industries have experienced probably more disruption than almost any other uh, industry sector uh, in Australia. And through this period, uh, for any council that wasn't aware of the importance that the tourism industry provides uh, to their local economies and the vibrancy of their local economies, they certainly understand that now. And so while we appreciate that uh, many businesses that are reliant on uh, international uh, visitors have been uh, severely impacted and continue to be severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, there's also been some uh, challenges presented uh, with the increase in intrastate and even interstate travel now, um, though not right now, but there is increasing interstate travel uh, occurring. Um, which has placed strain on many regional tourism uh, providers. Uh, and these have exacerbated many challenges that have already been experienced in many regional areas um, uh, to date. And so this has placed strain on uh, many um, uh, regional uh, tourist destinations, especially those that are remote, that uh, maybe don't have uh, sufficient infrastructure amenities, and waste disposal services, and uh, even more frequent uh, is the uh, other challenges that many tourism operators are finding with workplace shortages. And these challenges are complex and they require collaborative uh, relationships amongst those involved in public policy uh, to find uh, solutions. And uh, I'm pleased to say that the LGA is an enthusiastic member of the Regional Visitor Strategy Steering Committee along with the SATC and also Sean De Bruin from TIC SA is on that committee as well. And uh, through that steering committee and through that process, we were, we were made aware and uh, we uh, participate in trying to find collaborative solutions to many of the pain points that private industry uh, experiences. And I just wanna run quickly through uh, two of those um, challenges. Uh, where we're seeking to play a productive role in, in assisting private sector industry. And one is uh, the infrastructure priorities, which uh, are laid out in the Regional Visitor Strategy 2025 document. And that those in infrastructure priorities are based on extensive uh, data research that the SATC um, uh, uh, identifies, uh, uses to identify these infrastructure priorities. And through the LGA, we're looking uh, to combine with the SATC and really identify 
uh, use that information to identify where um, uh, infrastructure priorities can align with opportunities through the federal government's $1 billion extension of the uh, uh, local roads and community infrastructure program. So, so that's one initiative that the LGA is working uh, in, a, in a collaborative way with the SATC. Uh, the other way is to uh, each organisation is, is working to alleviate workforce shortages in, re in regional areas. Uh, uh, and we've committed to share the knowledge and uh, collaborate with each other uh, to uh, alleviate those workforce shortages. And the LGA has really got a role uh, there in, uh, in advocating for skilled migration policy reform, uh, for increasing residential development, and to assist councils to develop a narrative uh, whereby we can market the livability of our regional townships and regions. So they're just some of the areas where we're playing a collaborative role with other agencies, including TICSA, to try and assist particularly regional tourism uh, providers. So thanks very much for your time this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and uh, if anyone would like to uh, uh, talk to me about any of the uh, issues that I've raised, I'll be around during morning tea and also after this session. So thank you again. Thank you, Tom. And thank you to LGA for hosting the session this morning. So. so for those who haven't met me before, my name's Stella, I'm from Tick SA. Um, I've probably emailed you all quite a few times, but great to finally put some faces to, to names this morning. Um, I'd just like to touch on the key sort of submission sections that will make up your award submission before I hand over to our experts to talk through how to respond to each of those key questions. So in terms of what's involved, um, this example here is based on the general category question set. Um, and obviously there might be some um, variation to the questions dependent on the category that you've um, nominated into. So for all categories, we are working to an 8,000 word word limit for this year. That's um, of course a reduction from the 12 and a half thousand words um, that were set in 2019. So a considerable uh, reduction in word count there. Um, and of course, still including 25 supporting images to those 8,000 words. Um, the new component that we've introduced for this year's program is the online review. That'll be completed by your site visit judge before they come out and experience your product. And the consumer rating score for most categories um, accounting for 20% there. So um, hopefully you've all had some correspondence from me um, to um, ensure that you do have the minimum number of 25 reviews across the two financial years. And then, of course, for most categories, there is a site verification visit as well. So in terms of the key submission sections, um, by now you should have all um, become familiar with the question set that you're working to. Um, and for most, probably started working on a bit of a draft. And that's great to start formulating at this time. Um, we always sort of recommend um, getting some key ideas down, making some notes. But this session today will really detail, um, you know, each of those key questions, what the judges are looking for um, in terms of the content content of what you've written. And just a bit of a tip there um, at the bottom right hand corner of the slide um, to aim as a bit of a guide for 110 words per point allocated to the question. Um, and our experts would talk to this a little bit more. Um, but the reason for that being that the questions that are worth the higher number of points, it's great to ensure that you're writing um, a higher volume of words to that question. So I thought I'd just use the opportunity today to click into the awards portal and navigate through a submission example. Um, I think it's uh, important that everyone feels uh, confident to then upload their submission to the portal, although you should all be working 
in your Word document just to ensure that you've got a safe copy of your working uh, responses. So this here, I've I set up a bit of a test account. Um, of course, this being the Quality Tourism Framework Dashboard, it's our home for all of our business development programs within TKSA. So of course, um, showing there the accreditation program for our star rated properties, this is where they access that online portal for their stars. And the one that uh, all of our nominees will be um, uploading their submission to will be the award section of this portal. So we click on view more detail below that awards module, which you'd all be familiar with having nominated through the same um, process. Um, and for those that paid by a credit card, you would have had automatic access uh, given to you to then um, access the submission. And those that paid by invoice, um, you'll receive access once, pay once payment is received for that payment. So um, we've got a test nomination sitting here in the portal. Um, and so you can see here, if you um, have more than one nomination, that'll be displayed on this, on this uh, home screen here. If you did select invoice for your method of payment for the nomination, that information will sit there. And then for any of our nominees that have entered the program in previous years, your past submission and judges feedback will be displayed in this section of the portal. So really encourage anyone that's a returning entrant to um, go back and access the judges feedback from your previous years, because um, there's a lot of value in um, the judges feedback uh, for that past submission. So we're going to go into the nomination tab here to actually access the entry. So we'll click on view entry and this is where you'll access all of the the questions for your submission so as you can see here this test account is currently not an accredited business um, for those businesses that don't currently hold our accreditation the business standards questions will appear so these are a light version of the accreditation question set but what's great is at the end of the awards pro process in August, if you haven't yet achieved the accreditation, so long as you remember with TKSA, we can award that quality tourism accredited business um, certification to your business. So um, yeah, great sort of um, uh, benefit of doing the program um, and achieving both an awards submission and an accreditation for your business at the end. So this one here being the module for those accreditation questions. If you are accredited, you'll just see this second module along the top there being for the award submission. And just the key um, module sections along the bottom here are reflecting of your question set. So I like to sort of navigate through on the next section button. So we're just gonna click through and I'll show a bit of an overview of each of these. Media and promotional, just ensuring that that's completed by the 18th of August. So you've got your hero images um, and the high quality um, imagery there as stipulated in those specifications. Um, and then each of the questions are then shown um, on each module here. So you'll see there that it does count your words as you enter them in. And this is going to be the same method that you'll use to submit a draft to our judges. So um, copy and pasting across from the Word document that you're working in, um, uploading to your submission here. And I'll just click you through. That's all sort of fairly straightforward in terms of just adding in your responses. Now, when you add in an image, you'll see here that you can click this button to insert an image and it's quite simplified. It allows you to align the image to the left, right or center and add in a caption within the portal. So there's no real need to onboard a, um, a graphic designer to make a, a submission in a document look really beautiful. You're going to be copy and pasting across and how it appears in the awards portal is how the judge will view it when they assess your submission. So just making sure that your application looks great in the portal, the images are the right size, that'll make sure that the judge is viewing it in the same way. And the judges will never export your submission to review it. They only ever assess the submission in the portal. So, um, you know, just to respect the IP of your application as well. 
So just clicking through here with those key questions. Um, and of course, it's going to be tallying the word count at the bottom there. And then when we go through to finalize, so you'll want to just check that you're happy with the media and promotional and all of your responses. I'm just going to go to the finalize tab. I just wanted to demonstrate um, here. So at this time, of course, we're quite some time away from the 18th of August. So the only opportunity here is to submit your application for draft review. I'll have a judge available to review a draft for you from the 1st of July being um, the close off date to submit a draft is the 21st of July. Our advice is to have pretty much a polished finished submission when you submit it for a draft. Um, if you're not quite at that stage by the 21st of July and you've got a 50% finished submission, that'll just um, restrict the, the, um, the depth of the judge's feedback in that draft. So the more polished and finished it is, the higher quality their feedback will be. And, it, and that'll be a lot more beneficial in terms of then refining from that feedback, a polished submission by the 18th of August. So for everyone in the room and online, was there any questions regarding the online portal or that uploading process? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So what I will, I'll just paraphrase there for those on the uh, live stream. Um, so we had a question regarding the images in the media and promotional section. Now, my advice would be that the eight that you upload at the bottom here are you know, your best images. If they happen to be a duplication of eight images that you've also popped into your submission, that speaks for itself. You're going to put your high imagery, high quality imagery into your submission. Um, but your two hero images and the eight supporting photos that also depict your product, the judges won't assess or review these. So if they're your best images, make sure they're in your 25 as well. Is there any other questions regarding the portal? Yeah, Adam. So just a question regarding how the submissions viewed and the export function. So the judge won't ever export the application. So as long as it looks really nicely laid out and all within proportion in the portal, that's how the judge will view it when they go to do the assessment. So just uh, for internal use, you're welcome to export your portal, uh, your application just for safekeeping. Um, and I'll just show you there, this button in the top left hand corner, the little print symbol, that one will export an application for you into a Word document. But just use that for safekeeping. All right, was there any other questions regarding, yeah. I believe it, it will cap the word limit to 8,000. Um, so just for those on the call regarding the draft submission review, um, the portal will uh, put a limit on clicking submit if it is exceeding 8,000 words. Um, but if you sort of, um, if you have a, a judge that's suggesting to add more and you're at, at the 8,000 word word limit, we encourage them to let you know what you'll then be able to remove to stay within that word count. So um, yeah, is there any other questions regarding that one? Yeah. Sure. Uh, just a question regarding the draft submission feedback. So the, the judge's feedback for your draft will appear in the portal below your response to each of the questions. So it's really quite a seamless um, platform where you'll have your submission appearing in this text box here. And when you receive the judge's feedback, you'll get a prompt via email that that feedback's been uploaded to the portal. When you jump back into your submission, you'll see the draft review judges comments below each of your responses. And that'll be the same process for getting judges feedback um, in November after the gala dinner as well. So it'll all be loaded into the portal. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so once you've submitted a draft for review um, from the 1st of July to, to the 21st of July, once I've allocated a judge to review your draft, uh, we've requested that they return their feedback within two weeks. Um, but the latest date that you'll get that feedback, say you submit that draft on the 21st of July, the judge has until yeah, two weeks after that time. So I think from memory, it's about the 4th or 8th of August uh, for that draft review feedback. So we do allow at least, you know, two or three weeks before that final submission due date to take that feedback in, make some changes and then submit your final application. Was there any other questions at all? Great. So 